one week later later <laughs> there we go <laughs> i'm so glad to have you home and safe here give me a hug ow mom i know i've been home you can stop hugging me every waking moment i love you so much no i can't mom she finally lets me go and i can breathe again today is the day you meet with the school board isn't it sweetie yep after school today will what's his name be there you know his name mom i don't know what to call him yes you do just call him pop tart he'll be fine with it i think he would actually prefer it it feels so strange though hello i'm cadence's mother it's nice to meet you mr pop tart mr pop tart just call him pop tart pop tart fine fine i'm looking forward to seeing what this pop tart looks like good luck okay mom hasn't met pop tart yet interesting my mom squeezes me once more tight in her arms i sigh but i hug her back just as tight it's so good to be home again i wonder if they'll ever find where that band director of yours disappeared to i don't know but until they find a replacement we can't hold band i hope the gap in practices won't affect affect our performance today don't look so worried i know you're going to be great you're right we're going to show them just how hard we worked for this. Here we go. It wasn't easy to get the entire school board to meet like this, especially since it was coming from a bunch of kids. Luckily, we had our parents backing us. And Ben, parents truly are some of the most fearsome foes within society. I spot my mom taking a seat up in the bleachers. She catches my eye and waves. Good luck. Go, Cadence. You got this. Jeez, Mom. It's like your life goal is to embarrass me. I'm sorry that we were in that place like three times and left you behind each time, Garth. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. Garth, how are you feeling? Thank you. Better, thank you. You've been through a lot. Take it easy. Indeed. I will. I will be staying on the sidelines, unfortunately. But I hope that I can join you on the field after today if all goes well. Good luck with your speech. He leaves to join the color guard. Ooh, I'm shaking a little bit. Of course, they elected me to speak, since I'm the drum major. Garth would have been so much better at this. Huh? That man in the audience. Was that? Cadence! Melvin rushes over to me, a flurry of nerves. I can't remember my opening spot. Please help me. I'm going to completely screw this up for the entire band. Whoa, deep breath smell. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, she's touching my cheeks. I put my hands on either side of his face and touch my forehead to his. He instantly shuts his mouth, a fierce blush rising in his cheeks. You got this. But... Stop doubting yourself. Think about how far you've come since the first practice of the season. I suppose I... You know you've got this. You've done it before and you'll do it again. Hopefully many, many more times after this. Because this isn't going to be our final performance. Right? Right. He takes a deep, shuddering breath and closes his eyes. Cadence? Yes? Thank you for believing in me. Always. Young lady! Y -y yes Superintendent Bell? We are ready for you to make your case. Melvin and I pull away from each other, flustered. He hurriedly trots away to locate his opening spot, eyes clear and focused. To my relief, he finds it right away. All right, here we go. I take to the podium with a deep breath. The stands are filled with anxious parents and school board members. I have performed for crowds ten times this size, but none have ever made me so nervous as this one. Hello. Thank you for coming. My name is Cadence, and I am the drum major of the Blue Mountain Bandits High School Marching Band. Before we begin our show, I would like to take a moment to speak with you and present the marching band's case on why we should not be cut from Blue Mountain High School's music program. Go on, then. Y yes You see, high school is a vital time in our young lives. 
A time of learning new things, not just about the world, but about ourselves. We are only beginning to discover who we want to be when we grow up and trying to find a place to belong. For many of us, marching band is that place. It is invaluable. It is so much more than a mere group of musicians. It is our second family and our home away from home, one that we cannot afford to lose. Yeah. Yes! M Mel? Melvin steps forward, chin held high. His eyes stretch with terror and his voice shakes as all eyes move to him, but he does not back down. His voice carries throughout the entire stadium. I have no home. I have no family. This marching band is my family. It took some time for me to see that, but I do now. It's given me a drive I've never had. It's given me a purpose, a place to belong. And I can't possibly lose that. As he speaks, his eyes drift away from the audience and the bleachers and focus on me. He stops stammering and his voice grows stronger. You've taught me so many things about who I am. I don't want it to end. Not like this. Not like this. Me too. Marching band has helped me grow and taught me what it means to be an effective leader. But I still have so much to improve on. I can't do that if you take it away now. And it's taught me that all of us can serve a purpose, no matter how big or how small. And that life may be full of disappointments, but you can't let that get you down. So we're gonna keep on keeping on until we can't anymore. Nice. When did he get so wise? <laughs> a number of other members speak up, adding their voices to the cause. Okay, everyone. Thank you for your input. Melvin falls back into line, looking mortified that he spoke in front of so many people. I flash him a comforting smile before returning to address the school board. So I, we, beg you to please reconsider your decision. Give us the opportunity to spread our wings and show you what a marching band can do when we all come together to serve a purpose. Thank you for your time. Please enjoy the Blue Mountain Bandits marching band field production of The Planets. I salute the board, then turn around to face the band. All eyes in the pit are on me. Drummers stand with drumsticks poised over their drums, and the guard cling tightly to flags and rifles, taut with barely suppressed energy. The wind sections stand across the field from one another, two armies ready to merge into one. I take a deep breath and imagine the announcer asking, Drum Major Cadence, is your band ready? I want to hear those words so badly. One day I tell myself I will. I raise my hands. This is it, everyone. If we can't convince them, this will be our final performance. Make it one to remember. Leave everything on the field. One, two, ready, and... Credits! Oh, man, that was a hell of a final chapter. <laughs> Holy crap. We got the trauma, we got the backstory, we got memories. Uh, we had stress, we had... Oh, uh, we just had a lot. There was a lot that happened. Also, something about Pop-Tart's final words when he's speaking to the whole board just reminded me of Stitch. Like, this is my family. It's broken, but still good. <laughs> it just had, like, big Stitch energy to me, which is great because I love Stitch and I love Pop-Tart and this was a heck of a route my goodness the most intense one I think so far for sure like it I'm... I feel like it also had like the best mix of everything like, it just felt like balanced all around you know Backstory from the boy, romance with the, like getting to know the boy, like the 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 pace of Pop Tart's romance felt very believable and realistic. Um, I bought the two of them getting closer together. The conflict with Wiley was like much higher stakes, but it felt felt very grounded. It felt like the everything building felt natural. It just, I really enjoyed everything about this. It felt very, just, well-balanced. Oh, that was really good. Just solid. Very, very solid. I'm, uh, excited to see what the finale's gonna be for these two. 
Ugh, my heart breaks for this boy. Good grief. I also love that we got to see, like, this moment from his perspective. That was wonderful. Big fan of that. Alright. Here we go. We're getting to the end. I can't believe Wiley escaped again. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was going to. I also can't believe we went into that cottage so many times and <laughs> we left Garth behind. <laughs> All right, it's over. I'm out of breath. So is the band, but that doesn't stop them from high-fiving and hugging each other. It may not have been perfect, but they gave it their all and that's what counts. We did everything we could. I turn to face the crowd. The school board is conversing. Whatever they're talking about, it seems to last forever. Then finally, the superintendent stands up and everyone falls silent. It is clear you have worked hard for this. Perhaps harder than any year before. And what you said in your speech does ring true. However... However? Well, it's simply a matter of money, you see. The school cannot give you anything. We would like to see marching band continue, but it would be in your hands. But how would we... Fundraising, my dear. And lots of it. Anyone up for another man auction? If you are all willing to put forth the effort, I am sure you will get the funds you need. Wait! So does that mean... Does that mean... Marching band is no longer going to be cut? Yes. We can't possibly end it here after you've already put so much work into the show. That, and I believe all of us, would feel the hole left behind by your absence at football games. Thank you. Thank you so much. No need to thank me. Just do all that you can for the program. And never stop learning new things. Of course. We definitely will. Everyone is cheering. I feel tears in my eyes and I'm smiling so hard it hurts. We did it. We saved the marching band. I climb down from the podium and go to join my friends. You did it! <laughs> you did it! Oh boy. Here we go again. M mr Wiley? Freeze! You're under arrest! The next thing I know, police officers surround us, armed with handcuffs. But Mr. Wiley hardly seems to notice. He just looks down at me, tears streaming, a grin so big it looks like his face is going to split. We knew you'd try to sneak your way back to the band, Wiley. Still, Mr. Wiley only seems to have eyes for me. His hands gently squeeze mine, and his blue eyes are filled with fondness. Oh, thank you. You know, that means a lot after you tried to kill me several times. You saved the Blue Mountain Band. It's marching band. My, my alma mater. My pride and joy. Thank you. 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 That's enough out of you. Let's go. Thank you. Hey. Goodbye, Mr. Wiley. Cadence. Mel! Before I can say another word, he wraps his arms around me with unexpected fervor holding me close. I cling to him. Closing my eyes and drawing in his scent, I linger in the moment. Thank you. You don't have to thank me. I did what anyone would have done to save the band. Not just for this. For everything. Oh. He doesn't have to explain. I already know. Everyone always says things will get better. I never believed that for a second. How can anyone know what the future holds? But... I think I can say with certainty. It is going to get better. I'm going to see to it that it does. And I'll be by your side through it all. I'm so glad you're here, Mel. He has no words left to say. Instead, he holds me just a bit tighter, and that says it all. Everyone is celebrating all around us, yet I barely notice them. Melvin and I stand at the heart of the football field, silent yet beyond exuberant. I can't wait to see what the future holds for this band and for us. What's our time skip? One year later! Ooh, we got a year! 
That's a big one. What's happening a year later? Where are we? At the fair? We finally made it! Last day of summer, here we go! I was stuck in the back of an ice cream truck all summer, sweating out my brains and making minimum wage. This had better be good. Trust me, Mel, you're going to love it. Amusement parks are the best. Oh, my stomach hurts already. Listen, where's all that screaming coming from? From the people on the roller coaster. They're having fun. It sounds like they're dying. Are roller coasters legally allowed to be that high? I laugh and take his hand. <laughs> You're going to be fine. I'm going to puke. I promise I won't force you to get on any rides you don't want to. No, I already told you. I want to try them all. Okay, but don't be afraid to back down if you're scared. I will not be scared. I'm not some clueless rookie that needs the drum major to look out for him anymore. <laughs> sure, whatever you say. Why don't we start with a tamer ride like the merry-go-round or the ferris wheel? Merry-go-round sounds good. It's Melvin's first time at an amusement park and he's determined to try everything. He was very intent on finding out which rides were my favorites and sharing the experience with me. He turned a bit green when he found out I'm a thrill seeker. I hope he realizes that I'll have fun with him no matter what we're doing. Even if it's just sitting on the bench eating cotton candy. After a grand buildup, we get on the biggest roller coaster the park has to offer. Melvin screams his head off the entire time. After we get off, he's shaky on his legs and looking ready to collapse. I'm sorry. Maybe we shouldn't have... What a rush! That was exhilarating. Huh? Let's go again! Wow. Sometimes I forget how far he's come. After a year in marching band, noise doesn't seem to bother him at all anymore. Though he still gets a bit nervous at the occasional thunderstorm. Okay, let's go! We grab each other's hands and make a beeline for the ride's entrance once more. The line is short and we wind up riding the coaster three times in a row. Then we hit all of the other rides. There's not a single one we miss. Pretty. When our feet grow sore and the sky begins to turn a pretty mix of evening pastels, we decide to take a break and have dinner. We locate the nearest food stand and wait in line, squinting at the menu from afar. We really picked the perfect day to come here. The threat of rain kept the crowds away, but the rain never came and it turned out to be a beautiful day. We're a lucky pair. Anyways, what would you like? It's my treat. Aw, you don't have to do that, Mel. I want to. This is the reason I worked my freckles off over fudge pops and choco tacos all summer. I'm treating you. Well, thank you. Would you like to split some chicken fingers and fries? Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Ooh, and let's get ice cream for dessert. I saw a little shop by the entrance of the park. It looked like they had really good soft serve. <laughs> you can treat to lunch and I'll treat to dessert. How's that sound? Melvin? Mel? He's staring at something over my shoulder. I turn around and follow his gaze. Um... I was wondering if you saw your mom. Still super skinny. There's a woman standing before us. She's staring at Melvin as if she knows him. Actually, the two of them look very much alike. The truth dawns on me at the same time Melvin speaks. Mother. Melvin, I've missed you so much. She walks towards us, reaching for Melvin. He cringes away, and I instinctively move to block him from her. She stops in her tracks, but doesn't acknowledge me in the slightest. Her eyes are fixed on Melvin, unwavering. There's a surprising amount of intensity in her gaze, like a starving predator that hasn't set its sight on food in weeks. How have you been? It's been so long. Why won't you speak to me, Melvin? Are you still angry with me? There's no reason for you to be angry with me. I've gotten help. I'm feeling so much better now. You can come back and live with me. 
That's what you want, isn't it? You miss your mother. Still, Melvin does not speak. It's as though he's completely shut down. His body is stiff, his gaze glued to the ground. His mother continues taking steps towards us, and I hold my ground, a barrier between the two of them. You're not going to speak to me? Your own mother? I raised you. I sacrificed so much for you. And you won't even look at me? What kind of son are you? All I ever did was love you. That's enough. I was going to say, I don't think she's changed an iota. Her eyes slide off of Melvin and onto me, finally taking note of my presence. I glare at her fiercely. I know what you did to Melvin, and I think it's time you leave. Excuse me? Who do you think you are? I am his mother! He doesn't owe you anything, especially with the way you treated him. No mother should ever treat her child the way you did. I lift my chin and speak passionately. You have a wonderful son. He is brave and clever and kind, but you could never know that because you never tried to know him. You squashed his personality under fear, and for that you don't deserve to know him. You should learn some respect. You have done nothing to earn anyone's respect. Yep, see? She got her. She got her. You little bitch! Mind your own business! It all happened so fast. She raises her hand to slap me across the face in one swift movement. I brace myself to feel the sting, but it never comes. Melvin stands between the two of us. He grips his mother's wrist in his hand, holding it at bay. That's enough. You don't speak to her that way. Ouch! You're hurting me! Leave now, or I will call security. I... I... Melvin's mother twists in her son's grip. She struggles for words, mouth gaping like a fish. Y you can't call security on me! I've done nothing wrong! You nearly assaulted my girlfriend, and there are dozens of eyewitnesses. Just look around you. He's right. All eyes in the area are on us. Melvin releases his mother. She stumbles a step back, maintaining her stunned expression. How can you hurt your poor mother like this? Melvin! Let's go, Cadence. I'm not hungry anymore. He gently takes my hand in his, and we walk quickly away. I can feel his mother's eyes scorching our skin, but she doesn't attempt to follow, and Melvin never looks back at her. We walk all the way to the front entrance of the park where the little ice cream shop is. Melvin lets go of my hand and stops walking. I stand by his side, allowing him to gather his thoughts. He's trembling. After taking a deep breath, he speaks. Thank you. Thank you for standing up for me back there, Cadence. And thank you for doing the same. What do you mean? I completely froze. I couldn't stand up for myself against her. But you stood up for me. Well, yeah. I care about you. He looks away, cheeks reddening. Even after a year of dating, he still gets shy so easily. A year of dating. Damn, look at you guys going the long term. Did you mean everything you said back there? Do you even have to ask? Mm. Melvin Whitlock. Someday, I hope you can see for yourself what a fantastic human being you are. I know it's not going to come easily, but until you do, I'll be by your side reminding you of everything within you that is good. Cadence, you're more than I deserve. That's what I'm talking about. You always treat yourself like you're nothing, like you're not meant to receive anything good in life. Stop telling yourself that. You don't deserve to be treated like dirt. And you certainly never deserved your mother's abuse. He smiles bitterly. Then, what do I deserve? I lean towards him and kiss his cheek. You deserve the world. 
His face turns beet red. The sight always makes me giggle. Thank you. There's something I wanted to tell you, Cadence. Growing up, I always had a poor sense of who I was. It's as you said to my mother. My personality was being squashed under fear. I was terrified of being myself. I was just existing. Not really living. Only existing. But then I joined marching band. I found a purpose. I had goals to strive for. And best of all, I met you. You helped me realize exactly who I am and what I'm capable of. You accepted all of me. He hugs me, his touch soft and gentle as it always is. His eyes shimmer like rubies in the setting sun as he looks deeply into my eyes and smiles. A genuine smile, free of fear and uncertainty. I truly and deeply love you, Cadence. I love you more than I can put into words. I love you too is what I want to say, but I'm so overcome with emotion that my voice seems to no longer work. So instead, I take his face in my hands and bring my lips to his. Yeah, you do, girl. Yeah, you do. Oh, it is so soft. Look at these two. They're so soft. Ah. Ah, so cute. His kiss is sweet and reminds me of strawberries. Or is it raspberries? I smile, overcome by everything we have shared over the past year. Melvin. Even if you are broken into pieces, I will stay by your side and do my best to put you back together. When the voices in your head are tearing you down, I will take your hand and build you back up. If the ghosts of the past come for you, I will face them down and fight them until the bitter end. And I know you would do the same for me. Finally, I find my voice. I love you too. I would be lost without you. That's okay if you get lost. Because I will always find you in the end. Oh, so cute. <laughs> the end! Yay! Whew, man. Is it bad that I'm going to feel, like, incredibly guilty now whenever I'm not with Melvin? <laughs> I'm like, he needs the most help out of anybody here so far. Like, yikes, man. Oh, he went through so much. I... Oh, it's just... I'm really glad Cadence was there to, like, bring him out of his shell and, like, start him on the path to self-worth. I like that it's like a year later and he, he's still working on it, you know? Like he wasn't fixed, it wasn't like, ah, I found someone to love me and now I'm like perfectly fine. Like he's still got trauma, he's still dealing with a lot of stuff, but he's got his girl by his side and she's working with him and supporting him and it's just lovely to see. Oh. All right, that was probably the longest final chapter in this game that we've ever done, but it was incredible. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, sadly, we're going on to bad endings now. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to find, but uh, I think there's at least two, if not three, bad endings. So we'll start that process next time. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time, I will see you later.